Hello, my name is John McDonald. I'm Technical Marketing Manager with Mentor Graphics. Recently, September 4th, 2015 to be exact, Mentor and Altera released a virtual platform for the Altera Area 10 SOC FPGA. I'd like to take a few minutes and show you how easily and quickly you can download the virtual platform, download a Linux image, run the virtual platform running that Linux image, and create user applications that run on the virtual platform. So to begin with, you need a couple of downloads. On the Mentor site, go.mentor.com slash Altera, there is a download link that will allow you to download the virtual platform. This is a, a free executable, so it supports functional software development on the Area 10 SOC FPGA. You can download it for free. You do have to register, but then you can just download it. Once you register and download, you'll get an email that will look something like this, and it should come a couple of minutes after you fill out the form and press download that will give you a link to allow you to download the virtual platform itself. So I have already downloaded the executable. And if I look here, the file that I downloaded was the area 10 virtual platform .targz. So I can extract that program. And now I have an install program that I need to run. So if I run that, install, and give it an installation directory, it is now installing the virtual platform onto my machine. I do have a basic license agreement, just accept that. So now it's installed. So now I have the SOC VP directory, which has the executable itself. So if I wanted to run bare metal software on the Area 10 platform, I could do that right now. The other thing I can do is download a pre-built Linux from um, Altera, which they make available on the Altera rocketboards.org site. So if I go to rocketboards.org, and under start, I can select my board. I'm using the Area 10 SOC virtual platform. Uh, there's no tool version. And I want to install and boot a pre-built Linux kernel. Now there are instructions here for installing the SOC virtual platform that I just went through. That's pretty straightforward. If you want to look at the instructions, they are here. But I'll get the pre-built. So there are some prerequisites that you have installed the platform. And then we need to download the targz file. So we'll download this file and we'll extract this into that SOCVP directory that the virtual platform was installed into. So if I look at my system, I have already downloaded the example, the Linux image and file system. So I'll extract that into the SOC VP directory. So this is where I installed my virtual platform executable. It's the directory that contains the run.exe. That's the actual virtual platform executable itself. So this created a file system image for me, and it created a Linux ELF, which is the uh, VM Linux bootable image. So that's what actually starts running initially in the virtual platform. So now that I've done this, I can start the virtual platform. So just run.exe will start the virtual platform and it's opened a couple of other windows. 
pull them over. And these windows, these are the consoles. So these are the consoles that are connected to the Area 10 virtual platform. One of them is booting Linux. The other is just waiting until the boot is complete. And on my machine, um, which is a couple of year old um, ThinkPad, it takes about 30 seconds to boot Linux to get to a boot prompt. I'll let that run, and while that's running, I'll take a look at the next step. So once I run the Area 10 virtual platform, then I want to compile my own program and load that. So I want to debug a Linux application on this platform. So one of the things I need to do, one of the first things I need to do is to set up my DNS. So the virtual platform has been set up to use port forwarding on your local machine. I'm running my host machine as an Ubuntu 14.04 um, Linux build. And we are forwarding a number of ports, and we've also set up the host to be a DNS server for the virtual platform that's running on that host. So I need to tell the Linux installation where the DNS is. So I'll copy this. Log in. So I'm logged in. This is the, the virtual platform itself, the Area 10. I'm running the Angstrom Linux release. And if I just paste in the command, There we go. So we'll set, put the DNS entry into the resolved.com. And this is a virtual platform. We should shut it down as you would shut down a real system. So to make sure we don't corrupt the file system or anything, I'll go ahead and halt this. Now that I've modified the DNS, that entry is saved in the... Um, the file system for this system. The system is halted. So now I'll come over and I'll go ahead and restart this. So I've rebooted the system. So we have both consoles now with a login prompt. So I can just log in, log in root. There's no password set, just a default. And now I'd like to get a program and run a program a user space program on this target. So to do that, I need to come over and get some software. So if I look, I have a little example program that I'll run, and there are instructions for setting this up on the Rocketboard site. So we need to install a couple of host packages on the virtual platform, on the target system. And we need to install a couple of packages on the host system. So these are the two packages for the host. We need the cross-compile toolchain, the GCC for the ARM target in the Area 10, and we need a GDB that will support this architecture. So if you execute these two commands on the host, that will ensure that you have what you need to cross-compile and build the application. I've already done this. And likewise, we need to install a couple of things. Well, one thing, the GDB server on the target. So on my target, I need to execute these two commands. So just the... O package update. So I'll go ahead and do the update. And this is going out over the network. It's 
updating the package definition files just like it would on a real board connect connected to a network interface. I've actually already installed the GDB server on this. Actually, I'm not sure that I have on this one because it's a new copy. So I'll go ahead and do this again. So this is installing the GDB server package itself. So while that's running, oh, that's done already. So now we can create our application. So we've got a simple application. And on the host, I have that application. So I'm just going to build that with the cross compiler. It's small, it runs very quickly. So now I have my cross compiled target application which is an ARM 32-bit executable, which has been built for the Area 10 platform. So now that I have this, I want to come over to my virtual platform and I want to copy this executable onto the virtual platform itself. So I can use SCP, and copy that application local. Uh, one thing I did have to do, if you have a, a new Ubuntu installation, you may have to enable um, SSH, install OpenSSH server on your host because this is using SSH to transfer the program. So I have my application. I can run that runs it directly, it runs, it runs correctly. Um, now I'd like to run it under the debugger so I can step through execution of that program. So to step through the execution, this shows us the instructions again. So I'll start a GDB server on the target. So I have my application. Now the port here is important. That is the port that I've set up and I've forwarded from my virtual platform target to the host so I can connect to that. So the port on the target side is port 8080. So I'll start the GDB server on port 8080. And then I can connect and debug that application. So I'll use GDB multi-arc, and in this case, I'll just do it through command line interface. So if I take the command here and just start the debugger, so it's loaded in the symbols, and now I need to connect to my target. Now that port 8080 on the target was forwarded to the host port 3624, and that's just one of the setup parameters that could be changed, but that's just the way mine's set up. So I'll connect to the target. So you can see that we got the message on the target that it was listening for a connection and now it got the connection from the host. So if I set a breakpoint in main, continue. So here we are, we're set, we're stopped in main about to start our factorial program. I can step through this. And as I step, when I hit my print statement, the factorial program is running on the target. So when I step over the print statement, the first factorial is printed out, the first output of my program. And I can just continue around as much as I want, stepping through and run really any user application that I would want to target to this platform. That's all it takes to get started. In the next installment, I'll show you how to set up a more user-friendly debug environment for compiling and debugging user applications. Mm -hmm.